is number 330, O God, Our Help in Ages Past. We're singing verses 1 and 2, and then verses 5 and 6. On this, the day when the guns fell silent, we gather in this sanctuary to remember and to sing and to pray. We come to commit ourselves to a future. We come before God affirming the sanctity of life and seeking to be channels of God's peace. Before we continue, particularly with the part of our service where we honor uh, those who have served our country on this November 11th, it's been our tradition to ask uh, those who have served either in the reserves or in active duty to stand. And I know many are away or at the Cenotaph today, uh, but if you have served, I invite you now to stand. Please be seated. I also know that there are many more of us who have also been touched by the tragedy of war. Recently, I was in a conversation with Dorothy McNay, and her husband passed away many years ago, but she reminded me that he had served in World War II, Roy McNay. And on my way into church, Lucas handed me a paper and his grandfather, Frank Abdi, served in World War I. I know there are many in this sanctuary today whose husbands or wives, whose brothers or sisters or uncles or aunts or grandparents served overseas or served in the reserves for our country. And so I'd like you now, if you have been touched in some way, if you have a relative who served, I invite you to now stand. Please be seated. Our youth hymn is number 474. The love of God comes close. It reminds us that even in times of great sacrifice, our God does not abandon us. Let's sing together hymn number 474 and we'll save the last verse for following our time of remembrance.
Please be seated. I'd like to invite a representative from the first Elgin BPSA Scouting Group, Jeff Clark, to come floor forward. He'll be reading for us that old poem in Flanders Field. the crosses, row on row, the marketplace and in the sky, the larks, so bravely singing, fly scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, warm loved and war loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields, take up our quarrel with the foe. To you, falling hands, we throw the torch, be yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep. Do poppies grow in Flanders fields? Today, as we remember the 100th anniversary of the end of World War I, we are mindful of those who sat in these pews in this church, who lost their lives during that, the Great War. We remember Hugh Somerville, William Douglas Bell, Herbert Good, H. V. McNaughton, William Courtney, Robert Anderson, A. Allison Horton, John Charles Alexander, Robert Derrick, James Anderson, and Adam Black. It has become our custom here at Knox on Remembrance Day Sunday to have our children place poppies in remembrance of those who have committed themselves to the cause of justice and peace in our world. And so in a moment, we will watch our Sunday school children come forward. And we will remember the Canadian men and women who served in World War I and World War II and in the Korean War and in the war in Afghanistan. We remember peacekeepers. We remember our troops who continue to serve in the Middle East, in Mali, in Indonesia, and in Eastern Europe, and in other places of conflict and natural disaster around our globe. We gather to remember all who have sacrificed and those who continue to sacrifice. invite those who are here who have not yet started school to come forward and I'll ask Bob Holt our clerk of session to help them pin a poppy on the cross I know we have one little person in a bucket seat somewhere. She may be downstairs where bucket seat people sometimes go. <laughs> then can I have those in kindergarten come forward? Ellie, are you feeling too shy today? Would you like me to take your poppy and pin it on the cross? I'm gonna take mine. Yours is fastened in really well. 
Those who are in grades one, two, or three, grades one, two, or three, you're invited to come forward now. Those in grade four to six. Thanks, Those in grade seven or eight. Those in grade nine and up. the members of the B first Elgin BPSA scouting group. Let's join together in prayer. Holy and loving God, as we see these children and young adults place their poppies on the cross, we remember those youngsters who did not know their fathers when they went away to war. We hold up to you school children today whose parents serve overseas and so miss birthdays and holidays. We pray for the veterans whose youths were stolen when they went to war. Lord, remind us again of the true cost of living in our country. 
for we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. I'd like to extend a special welcome to the Scouts today. We have so appreciated uh, you coming and being a part of this service and, uh, and offering leadership as well. I now invite us all to stand and join together in our national anthem, followed by the last post, and then a time of silent remembrance and the reveling.
Please be seated. And as our children are dismissed to Sunday school, we'll be singing the last verse of hymn number 474, and we'll remain seated to sing that verse. responsive psalm is the first 10 verses of Psalm 91. You can find it on page one in your inserts. And this is called the Soldier's Psalm, a psalm that brought comfort to First World War veterans. Our reader is Pam O'Sullivan. Those who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God and my trust. For the Lord will, will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence and will cover you with pinions. Under the Lord's wings you will find refuge. God's faithfulness is shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night nor the arrow that flies by day. A thousand may fall at, at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will look only with your eyes and see the end of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your habitation. No evil shall befall you, no plague shall come near your
Our scripture today comes from the epistle of James, James chapter 1, beginning reading at verse 17. Let's listen together for the word of God. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do it, what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it. They will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. We thank God for this reading from his word. Let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, may this message be in the name of the Father and for the sake of the Son and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I'm going to let you in on a secret this morning. The prayer of St. Francis, make me a channel of your peace, well, it actually wasn't written by St. Francis. No, the author of make me a channel of your peace is unknown. And the prayer, it first appeared around, around the time of the start of World War I. And not very long after that, it was set to music. Now many of us here will remember that hymn, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace, being sung at the funeral of Princess Diana. Do you remember that day Westminster Abbey was packed with somber faces and the young Prince William and Prince Harry with their eyes downcast and there were those crowds outside the abbey lining the streets and when the hymn was played, they also lifted their voices in song. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, true faith in you. The words were haunting then, as they still are. Perhaps because we know that hatred and injury, doubt, despair, darkness, sadness, all of the words in that prayer, they are still very real threats in our world. This past week, we saw the sorrow and the chaos after that shooting in California. 13 lives abruptly ended. If you followed the news, you would have relived the horrific rape and murder of Tori Stafford as the fate of her murderer was yet again determined. This week we heard about sexting and infidelity and extortion in the news. We saw images of refugees fleeing and border patrolmen preparing. 
we know that the words of St. Francis's prayer are still a part of our world today. Hatred, injury, doubt, despair, darkness. If we are honest, we'd have to admit that those things are also present in our own lives and in our own hearts. Who in this room has never been injured by the words of another? Who among us has never known a moment of despair? Or who among us has never said something that caused sadness to someone else? Those words from the prayer of St. Francis are a part of our lives too. Hatred, injury, doubt, despair, darkness, sadness. Our scripture reading today from the book of James reminds us that scripture too has a thing or two to say about those words. James, you recall, he was the brother of Jesus. So he'd seen his brother crucified. And during the years after Jesus' death and resurrection, it was James who shepherded the church in Jerusalem through all kinds of petty arguments and squabbles. And then in the end, it was James who was martyred for his own faith. So he knew a thing or two about the words in the prayer of St. Francis. James knew about hatred and injury, despair, darkness, and sadness. But in our scripture today, he pushes the first believers and us today to remember that those words never have the final say not in our hearts or in our lives or even in our world. James writes, every good and perfect gift comes from above, comes down from the Father of the heavenly lights. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. You and I, we are the first fruits of God's goodness. And in our scripture today, James challenges us to be kingdom builders. He says our words and our actions are the primary way that God's spirit works. We are channels of God's peace. And while hatred, injury, doubt, despair, darkness, and sadness might be realities in our world, so also, says James, are the good and perfect gifts that come from above. And you and I, we have seen those good and perfect gifts also in the news. Do you remember the image earlier this year of those boys from Thailand? Thumbs up was the image in the hospital. They had been trapped in a cave, and divers from around the globe had worked together tirelessly to save those boys. Do you remember that famous little video? It's on YouTube. It's of the man who failed to mind the gap on the subway in Perth, Australia. Have you seen that video? The man gets his leg caught in the gap and a stranger flags down a subway official before tragedy happens. And then everyone on the subway car piles out, all strangers, and they're all working together. And together, all of those people push the subway car sideways and the man's leg is released. 
And we know about those warm, open-hearted, practical Newfoundlanders who are immortalized in the musical Come From Away. After September 11th, they welcomed 6,700 strangers into their homes. They gave them food and lodging in the midst of a time of terror. We know about God's good and perfect gifts from above. Some of us saw them last week, last Sunday evening when we held that benefit concert for Spencer Edwards. And he rolled his way up in his wheelchair up to the front of this church with his wife and his son. He had had 18 months of illness and tragedy. And the offering plate was passed. It wasn't a huge crowd, but over $16,000 were collected, all to make a relative stranger's home accessible. It was an outpouring of love and of generosity. That is kingdom building. That is light overcoming darkness. That is ordinary people making a choice in the moment to be channels of God's peace. Sowing love where there maybe was hatred or pardon where there was injury or faith where there was doubt or hope where there was despair. Roman Kent was a Polish Jew who was sent to Auschwitz in 1944. He lost both of his parents in concentration camps, and he was freed as he walked along on a, a death march to Dachau. And Roman Kent, he has bleak and disturbing memories from his time as a young Jewish man in Europe during World War II. But after the war, he went on to work with other survivors of the Holocaust. And in 2015, three years ago, he sp spoke at the 70th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz. He was 87 years old. He's 90 now. This is what he said at that anniversary. He said, the daily cruelty and inhuman behavior in the camps is still indelibly etched in my mind. He said, the look of pleasure on the murderers' faces and their laughter as they tortured innocent men, women, and children is beyond description, and it lingers in my consciousness. The heartbreaking and weeping of the children torn from their mother's arms by the brutal actions of their torturers, it rings in my ears. And then he looked out at his audience and he said, we survivors, we cannot, we dare not forget the millions who were murdered. For if we were to forget, the conscience of mankind would be buried alongside its victims. We must all remember, Roman Kent said. And then he took a breath and he added, but to remember is not enough. Deeds, deeds as well as thoughts are crucial. It is our obligation. We must fight virulent prejudice and hatred. We must teach our children tolerance and understanding. We must make it clear that hate is never wrong and love is always right. Today, November 11th, is a day when we are called to reflect and to remember. But in the words of Roman Kent, to remember is not enough. Our scripture tells us that God's peace is already at work in the world. And you and I, we have seen it. 
Our scripture today pushes us to go outside these doors of this church building. And in the conversations we have with our families and with our neighbors, in the decisions we make at the polls, and in how we conduct ourselves, we are called to hear the prayer of St. Francis and to be channels of God's peace. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, make us mindful of our responsibility to be citizens of heaven even as we live here on earth. Remind us that our actions, our decisions, and our words matter. And help us, O oh God, to be channels of your peace. Where there is injury, to bring pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. And where there is darkness, only your light. For we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. As we remember the sacrifices that have been made for us, so also we bring our gifts and our offerings. The offering will now be received.
Let us pray. Living God, we bring our gifts and our prayers to you. We bring our worries and our dreams, and we offer all of this to you in prayer. Gracious God, bless all that we bring, for we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, today we hold up to you places around the world where violence is still a reality. In faith, we pray for the men and women who represent our country today, serving in places that are dangerous. We hold up to you young boys who have been forced into being soldiers. We pray this morning for refugees who flee for their lives. We also pray, O oh God, for all people of power and privilege in our world today. Give them your grace and your wisdom and your compassion. And help all of us, O oh God, to hold tight to the deep knowledge that all people are your beloved children. For we ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 794. We'll be singing the first three verses, Abide With Me. Now let us go in peace and may the grace of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with each of you and all whom you love this day and forevermore. Mm -hmm.